Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Alison and in this video we're going to be talking to Aaliyah. Aaliyah is a mother of two children and just like myself she has eczema um, by, well, she has eczema and also her children do too. So without further ado we're going to get started. However before I do get started remember to like, subscribe, share and comment and also hit the notification so you know when the next video is coming out. So let's get started. So we're going to get straight to it. My guest today is a lady called Aaliyah Suarez. Is that correct? Yes. Now I have known Aaliyah for a couple of years now um, and she is the proud mother of two, two absolutely gorgeous children. Um, and like myself, she's been going on a journey with regards to um, eczema, eczema for herself and also for her children. So I thought it'd be a really good idea um, with Aaliyah saying thank you, uh, Aaliyah agreeing, thank you very much for that. Uh, just interview uh, Aaliyah because when we're all at different stages, you kind of sometimes think you're on your own when it comes to eczema. So this is just to let you know that you're not on your own. And uh, we're going to go through Aaliyah's story. So uh, here we go. Right, so Aaliyah, did you, if you want to just quickly introduce yourself to the, uh, to the viewers. Hi, I am Aaliyah Suarez. I am 24 and I am the mother of a three-year-old and a four-month-old and i do have epilepsy um and one of my children has eczema and i have had dry skin my entire life borderline to eczema so that that is me that is you in a nutshell now there's an interesting story, actually, because obviously, um, because I have known you for about two years, you hear me going on all the time about things I do and things I don't do, um, things I've tried, things that have gone wrong. But um, obviously, <laughs> because it, that's my normal to me, so the way I do things to, to some people is a little bit crazy. But uh, you've taken some stuff on board yourself um, without my input, because obviously I didn't even know you were doing this. Um, and you implemented some changes, but just to say, first of all, it's your eldest, um, Analea, that has the eczema, isn't it? Your, your eldest yes. is your daughter. So I obviously I'm aware of um, Analea's um, eczema because you have also used my moisturiser, the Tiggs and Moo Body Butter. Um, but along came Ezreal, your absolutely gorgeous four-month-old son. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, you decided you were going to try something new for yourself. Um, yeah. Now, you do have a little bit of eczema, don't you? Uh, or dry skin, more, more so. Yeah. Um, I have dry skin. It's okay. not to the point of eczema, but okay. I have very dry skin. Right. So what you tried wasn't necessarily to do with your eczema, but it was just to change in diet. Um, in yeah. It, what I tried was um, for me and my four month old, because I started out breastfeeding him. Okay. But you know, anything the mother has, the baby gets. And so yeah. he was a very um, windy baby. And I figured if I want to give him the best, I have to have the best. So I had to cut out the candies and the sugars and no sodas, you know, <laughs> things that you would normally eat. You, yeah. I really had to cut back and not have. Yeah. And um, one day it ran across my head to just, you know, cut it all out. Because previously I would have the occasional, oh, I'm going to be healthy episode. <laughs> and I would get the whole grains and this, you know, the whole shebang. And then yeah. some days later, it's too much. I'm just going to go back yeah, to the way everything was. Really and so I decided I'm going to go for a week or two. And I'm going to eat nothing but fruit and vegetables. Every mm -hmm. dish that I had was just fruit and vegetables. And eventually I added in you know, like whole grain pasta. Mm. But my main thing was the fruit and vegetables. That I think okay. that was the big area for me. Mm. And because yeah. um, we were already on dairy free for my daughter, my daughter had to be dairy free because that was her biggest that was her trigger, trigger for her, her yeah. eczema. And so I just kind of incorporated that into and we were on a really healthy diet. I started to feel different. I started to feel lighter in my body yeah. the food sat differently in my stomach where um eat out food or you know, takeaways and things yeah what sits heavy like you yeah. can literally feel it in your stomach it takes a long time and your to body just really feels really heavy food. and like 30 minutes later you'll be hungry again this food sat on my stomach gent gentler 
but yeah. I was full all night through. I eat dinner at four o'clock and I'm full all night after That's it. That's really good. That's really good because you're eating the right thing, obviously. I did notice I put on weight though, which wasn't bad because when I don't eat healthy, I notice I lose weight even though okay. I'm eating a lot. Yeah. But eating healthy, I gained weight, but I didn't gain weight in an unhealthy way, like fast yeah. or slow. It was just naturally my body was getting the nutrients it needed. And so it was a healthy you body. Felt better for it, yeah. And my face looked better, my skin looked better. I remember seeing um, you and asking why your skin had changed. And that's when you told me you changed when you were eating. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the queen of spots. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be all the sugar, though. <laughs> And um, the first week, I remember, I did have a couple withdrawals. So yeah. I am also the queen of caffeine and sugar. Mm -hmm. Everything you will find in my house and that goes into my body involves sugar. And at least half of that involves caffeine as well. I it's because you were looking for a quick fix. Yep. I had two children to run after and... My epileptic medicine makes me tired. And then I'm just tired because I have a new baby. Yes. And a two-year-old that wants me to chase her. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to knock back some espresso or something yes. to keep me alive in my zom zombie-like body. Well, I, I remember when you were pregnant uh, with the Ezreal, your second, and I took that drink off your energy drink and poured it down the sink and you were shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was mad. I was I like, remember. that was my dream. And I remember saying, I'm doing it for you, but your, un your unborn child. <laughs> you weren't happy with me at all. <laughs> no, I was not. I remember I told my mom, I was like, mom, she just took my drink off me. <laughs> I offered you a nicer drink now. I do remember that. <laughs> so but, yeah. apologies. But yeah, I was, I was thinking of Israel. <laughs> I remember. So I did have about seven days. Mm -hmm. of withdrawal and every day the headache got worse yeah so it literally went from you know like the gentle migraine yeah. and the migraine got worse and worse every day to, and there's nothing you can do about it is there yeah until it became multiple migraines so it's a migraine for 30 minutes then it goes away then 30 minutes later it comes back yeah like and eventually it stopped by the mm -hmm. seventh to eighth day it makes you realize how dependent your body is on this junk, yeah. really. Yeah. That and it's really so different. bad. Your body, like you and, you and yourself want to go get something to mm -hmm. fix it. Uh, yeah. So I really had to hold back on that. Well, yeah, and I think you did really well because I, I believe that sugar is more addictive than cocaine. That, that's a, a, a poster is. I've seen before. So I think you've done really, really well. Really impressed. Thank you. And once I figured out, I was having two different versions of withdrawal. So I was yeah. drawing from sugar and caffeine. Yeah, that's pretty hard hit. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I was not okay. I was like, this is not a go. <laughs> Tell me, even, even with the withdrawals, did you see your skin improving in the first week or your body feeling better in that first week? Obviously, the head, from the head, you didn't feel better. But what about the rest of you in that first week? I couldn't even focus on the rest of me. My oh, head no. was so bad. Yeah. Um, I did see my skin. I would look at myself in the mirror and I did see a difference. Yeah. Um, and I didn't feel the change in my body very quickly. No. I think that's what people need to realize. It's not a quick fix. You know, this, especially if you're planning on doing it for the rest of your life, it's, it's a massive life change. A lot of my diet was cut out. And I was literally for a week living just on fruits and vegetables. So the only sugars I was getting were natural sugars on the fruit yeah and at the end of the day i have noticed that even today i um what did i have i had a blueberry muffin this morning yeah. and i had it and i felt like i had woken up okay. and then two minutes later i am murderously tired and dead it's like, like yeah. i didn't sleep for yeah, you've a week energy hit, you've had a quick energy hit and then you crush again yeah and then i had an apple and I felt a steady raise. Yeah. So there's not like a massive high and then a crash. It was yeah. like a steady boost. And yeah. I stayed yeah. there. Because the fiber in the apples kept you fuller for longer. And it's also it's slow release in energy, isn't it, as well? Yep. Mm. And um, after the week, 
it became normal. It became easier to just eat the fruits and vegetables. It felt better. My body in itself just felt lighter on its feet. Like I didn't have extra weight on yeah. me. And I think when you start to feel the difference and see the difference, it kind of it motivates you to do more. It you does. You want to see that difference first, don't you? And then after that week, I started adding in whole grains. So I had pasta and stuff. And even yeah. that in itself made me feel heavy, yes. but it wasn't an unhealthy heavy. Okay. It was just, now, I was incorporating something that I had unincorporated yes. for two weeks. I don't know if you've tried the gluten-free pasta yet. You can get like brown rice pasta and things. I think I have. Because mm. a couple weeks ago, Analea's eczema flared, but we had removed the dairy. So we... We've just lost you. Are you still there? Are you still there? One, two, three. I am here. You you disappeared. You said, um, you just said that Analea, you removed the dairy because the eczema flared up and then it went, and then it went. Oh, so eczema, yeah. So her eczema flared and she was already on a dairy-free diet. So we knew it had to be something else. So we went to gluten and I started doing a gluten-free diet for me and her because it's just easier to do something free in general rather than just putting it on one person. Yes. That's how um, I started as well. So I completely get that. I'll be honest. Gluten-free is really something you have to get used to because everything tastes different. Bread tastes different. Cream, crackers, taste everything tastes different yes. without gluten. Yes. Gluten is what holds the food together. Exactly. It's, it's the luck, isn't it? It's the, yeah. Um, gluten. But it's not nasty, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. I figured out throughout this entire diet, there's always a way to make something taste good. Always. You just have to know what to do with it, how to work with it. you got to persevere. I completely agree. I noticed that gluten very much made me bloat. Yes. And I didn't like it at all because I had not been bloating. Then I ate a piece of, piece of regular toast and I bloated like a balloon. <laughs> and you felt uncomfortable. And I was like, again, this is not a go. <laughs> <laughs> And so I was like, everything stays gluten free. I am not, unless I have to, I am not eating anything with gluten. And isn't it amazing the difference it makes? People, and, and do you know what it is? People don't realize um, how bad it makes them feel to you remove it for a period of time, yeah. feel better, and then reintroduce it and just realize just how bad it makes you feel because it causes inflammation in the body. And anyone that's watched my previous videos knows that inflammation in your body, inflammation in the gut, then causes inflammation on the skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, which obviously raises its he- ugly head as it could be acne, eczema, it could be all these different types of skin problems or even dry skin um, or fine lines, anything like that. If you irritate your body, you're going to irritate the skin. It's that simple. And if you don't irritate your skin, you're very, very lucky. But there's obviously problems going on in your body that you're not aware of. Simple as that. And yeah. So what happened was we figured out at the time, because at the time she got a cold. Right. And we didn't, because she had had colds previously and her mm-hmm. eczema didn't flare. We didn't think it was that. But mm-hmm. her cold, as her cold started to go away, her flaring started to go away. Right. So we linked it and I was like, it's not the gluten, but I'm not adding gluten back in because yeah. of the bloating and all that. Yes. I just, I didn't want gluten back either. Yes. You made the right choice. But her, um, her flaring went down. And then I can honestly say that gluten itself does have an effect, but not as severe effect as a sickness or dairy has for dairy. her. So the, the dairy is her main trigger. Yeah, sickness and, and dairy are her her main triggers. Yeah, and I think with the sickness, it's not because her body's stressed and run down. So again, that yep. can flare up. So I think actually up. sickness is the only thing that's properly made it flare. The other ones irritate it. But yeah. like for it to be raised and it's bumpy, it's sickness that causes mm-hmm. that for her. It's good you've worked it out because it takes people, you can take people a long time, if not never, to work out what their triggers are. You've done really it, well with it, that. It was difficult. It is Your difficult, book really it? helped. Your book really helped. 
fantastic. Stuff. It, it taught me certain things. Um, and so for those who are wondering what Aaliyah's talking about, it's the free download be- below this video, the eczema guide you're talking about. Get it. It? Yes, yeah. <laughs> they need to get it. It will be the best choice of their life. <laughs> there you go. Um, also, um, sugar. Mm. So sugar doesn't make it flare, but it makes her itch. Right. That's something I noticed. She would have like a, because we tried to get her as natural as she can, um, popsicles. Yeah. So just like fruit popsicles or fruit sickles, you know, something you think doesn't have too much fake sugar in it. Yeah. Everything's natural. We, I noticed after she ate those, she would just start itching her arms right. or her behind her knees would itch because that's yeah. the location of her eczema. It wasn't the inflammation. And um, even if they weren't inflamed, she would just do it. Yeah. And I was like, she's itching because of sugar. Like the sugar is making her itch. I always say sugar is a devil in disguise. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I removed, I don't drink proper sugar anymore. Like I don't add sugar to my um, tea because yeah. I fully cut out caffeine. Okay. I added things back, but I fully yes. cut out caffeine because I've decided if I'm ever going to withdraw from something again, I can only withdraw <laughs> from one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah, one thing at a time is definitely better than such a massive multitude of sins, as it were. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I was like, no more caffeine. I even have like a tea that I drink. I drink a specific tea that doesn't have caffeine in it. Fantastic. And um, I'm making a small compromise right now because previous... I bought some honey that probably does have um, fake sugars in it, but I have yes. to use that. And then I'm going to use the natural honey. The natural one. That so you gave one. us. Yeah, because I gave you a local one that came from, straight from the beekeepers, didn't it? Yep. So yeah, then I'm going to so use that, that, that one and only that one. Brilliant. Brilliant. And, and, um, and you will find just, the, you know, locally produced honey, it has the antibodies which will help towards like hay fever and things like that as well. Um, whereas the shop bought honeys, the, the ones on the supermarket shelves, they've been heated so high that all anything that was originally good in the honey has gone. Mm. So all you are is having the pure sugar now. So you're doing the right thing there. Yeah, um, but I've noticed in general that the, just the diet change, mm. because I suffer as well from anxiety, yeah. um, postpartum depression, and depression in general because of my epilepsy. Yeah. Um. So. I've noticed that just in general, the diet change has mentally helps me. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really weird because you don't think that knowing that you're taking in a healthier diet will make you happy because in your head, it's just as long as I'm eating, I'm okay. And people, do you know what? I've said this so many times to people that what you feed your body is eventually going to feed your brain. If you, if you feed it with rubbish, you're going to have rubbish thoughts as well. You know, it's, it's all it's all going to affect you. What you put in your gut is going to affect your brain regardless of whether you believe it or not. You know, there's, um, there's a YouTube video I watched. I'm going to put the link below. And it's a doctor who's a, a specialist in depression. And she explains mm-hmm. about the vargus. Um, what's it called? Is it the vargus vein or the vargus artery? Uh, but there's a, there's a split our vargus nerve that, that runs from the, the brain through the body. And uh, if you don't eat the correct food, you can actually add toward your depression with it. So mm. there you go. And food. then I started doing a vegetarian diet on accident. I only did it because um, it gave me dairy-free things, yeah. meals that I could make. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was all classified under vegetarian. So, you know, it cut out a lot of vegan? things. Vegetarian or vegan? Vegetarian. Okay. I did um, things from both. So okay. I also did vegan and yeah. vegetarian. Okay. It was just really whatever we felt like eating that night. Mm. But of course, it was, you know, there was no um, animal or anything yeah. in it. And yeah. um, my body really liked that. Oh, wow. That's amazing. It really, really liked that. That was when I saw my epilepsy, my epilepsy reduced massively. Oh, wow. So you're saying that when you change your diet massively, um, in other words, just dropped animal and sugar and gluten, your epilepsy um, 
bits nosedived? How many? Because you have quite a few a week, but you were saying all per day, don't you? Yeah, so I have about three a day. Okay. And they can range in severity. Wow. Um, and I noticed at one random point, I was like, because it's really sad. At that point, I think I was thinking, you know, I haven't had any ep- seizures today. And then I thought back and I was like, I haven't had really any for a, like a decent period. Wow. That's, that is seriously, that's mind blowing. So how much, because you've been epileptic for how long? Since I was two. Since you were two. So 20, you're 24, 22 years. Yeah. And, um, obviously you're on epileptic, epileptic drugs, aren't you? Yeah. Drugs, and no one's ever thought to tell you to change your diet. No. Wow. No. That is amazing. They were really stuck on the medicines trying to control it. But we figured out that my epilepsy will never be controlled. Controlled epilepsy is where you don't have any. And that will never be my case, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're never going to get rid of it, but you've at least managed to know how to reduce it. Yes, properly. That's that's the last thing though, isn't it, for you? Oh, yes. Definitely, definitely. That's amazing. It it helped me with my tiredness because I get tired because the epilepsy really taxes my brain and my body. So it helped me in that case. And um, of course, my body is naturally tired because of the medicine. Yeah. So it didn't create like a massive change. Yeah. But I noticed I was just able to go for longer periods without feeling as tired. Okay. And I could do more things. I'm blown away. I'm actually blown away. Uh, the, f- the fact that you've, d- you've done this so you could feel better with regards to your stomach, really, wasn't it? Yes. And when you ate, but it's managed to reduce your epilepsy, make you feel less tired and just feel better about yourself. And it obviously gave me a whole different mind. life to yeah. an extent, almost. Yeah. So when I, say, when I say to people, like, you know, change the way you eat to help your eczema, it, it extends beyond that. You know, mm-hmm. obviously, your, your da- you've changed your daughter's diet for her eczema, but this has helped you in so many other ways as well. Um, your, your food is your medicine and people don't realize just how important the food is. It took me years. And I think I said to you, it took me till after I had my surgery to remove my large intestines and my colon um, to realize just how important food was and um, um, the major impact it had on my life. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I, I completely understand what you're saying right now about your epilepsy. It's, it's, yeah. it's amazing. And so I did it for everybody in the house, right? <laughs> Fantastic. And- <laughs> Now you know I why I was so, I was <laughs> so I mean everybody's gonna eat this vegan or vegetarian diet or they were gonna have to fend for themselves. Yeah. I love and it. So everybody was <laughs> vegan and vegetarian for almost a month with me. Fantastic. And I was funny. feeling the difference. So I'm guessing they were feeling it as well. Mm. Did they and admit it? Then I I'm pretty sure my mother did, but my grandmother was not happy. She needs her meat. Yeah. And so after a while, it um, it became that at one point she came to me and she said, she said, what are you making tonight to an extent? And I said, I don't have anything like off the top of my head because I, I have like a routine where I pick out all the meals for the week and then I go yeah. shopping for the week and we just get what we need yeah. and I make the meals as the day comes. But mm-hmm. since we do that, I can to an extent be flexible about what meal I cook. I was like, I don't know right now. And basically what she wanted to do, she she wanted to make fish (laughs) because she wanted some meat. (laughs) That was actually quite funny. And so what I did was I relented because, I mean, meat isn't bad. No. I figured out that meat is much, very much a delicacy. So you can eat it every day if you want, Mm. but really that's not necessarily healthy for your body. You yeah. can eat it every other day or every two days, like yeah. make it a delicacy in your it, life. It doesn't, to, it doesn't have to be in every single meal. Yes. Saying. And put it around the yeah. core yeah. of what your diet should be, which should be natural fruits, vegetables. Yeah, I get it. So what you're saying is the, the main bulk of your plate should be vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Fruits. Yep. It's a very small portion being the meat or the fish. Mm-hmm. Just what it used to be, you know, like a hundred or so years ago, um, and then obviously as the lifestyles changed and, and time changed, meat starts to be the main thing on the plate, mm. and, and vegetables end up being the garnish. <laughs> yep. So, 
So yeah. honestly, fruits and vegetables should be your main dishes. Even yeah. your snacks should be fruits and vegetables. If you need yeah. a pick me up, go get some fruit. Yeah. Fruit will and pick you thing up. Is real if quick. we teach our children from now, that'll become their normal. Mm-hmm. You know, rather than waiting that's to what, get to our That's what I've raised Anna Leon. She loves her fruits and vegetables. I've that's what she it. snacks on. That's what she eats. That is her normal. She likes her meat too, Brilliant. but she understands that that comes with a meal. Yeah. She's not asking for for a snack or anything. Mm-hmm. And she's not really asking for cookies and if she does, we don't give it to her because that's just not healthy. Exactly. exactly. And with the baby cuz he's 4 months now, we're doing the same thing. He's had different, organic right? oatmeal and yeah. um carrot. Fantastic. Fantastic. And the young the young, the young is put on this journey, then they're less inclined to have any issues at all. Yeah. Um but Yes, that and we kind of fell off the wagon after that. After <laughs> we did that, we fell off the wagon. Easily done. Every meal I had, I just felt it. My body just started to rebel. It was like, yeah. don't put this in me. The moment it goes in me, I'm sending it right back out. <laughs> <laughs> Now I, rem- I remember you said when you first reintroduced um, gluten into your diet, you were you couldn't go to the toilet for several days, could you? No, and then I forget what happened. I started going to the toilet too much. Yeah. Can go like every way. meal go right after way. it, I was going to the toilet. And I was yeah. like this is not okay. <laughs> But it made you realize, it. it made you realize then that these things were not good for your body, but you just, you're yeah. putting up with feeling rubbish, so. And then my body actually started to crave the very te- very te- vegetarian vegan diet that i had it on it preferred yeah. that my yeah. brain in itself preferred that yeah. type of eating yes 